Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 421 that's 421 of the Agassino Zynga show how are you doing how are you feeling great amazing how am I you know doing as best as I can on this cold wintry day if it's your first time check out the show via YouTube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below turn on your notification bell all that good stuff if you listen via the podcast that please give me a five star review share the show with your friends download it um, leave a comment all that good stuff let it get spread and get it out there as much as you can support via patrons or the more is more than welcome you can support via patron the link is in the show notes description it's patreon.com for Agostino for letters one pound you can get access to a bonus episode i'm going to be recording only for my patreon friends make sure you jump on there there'll be loads of exclusive content loads of stuff that i haven't spoken about publicly on here and i'm going to go on there there's going to be an update on the whole peggy Goo and daniel wang situation that you're going to want to hear so make sure you jump on patreon.com for just agostino for as little as one pound you can sign up to my patreon and get exclusive access to that and i'm going to tell you the story as it requires so make sure you jump on patreon.com one bonus episode per month for my patreon fans jump on there patreon.com for just agostino get involved get involved anyway how are you guys doing man how's the life how's life great how am i i'm i'm doing okay man i went on on my first like big run this week and um wow man uh my body is hurting everything in my body is hurting from my stomach to my legs to the bottoms of my heel like god damn it's been a while since i've been out jogging and again i'm not really um what i say uh i'm an active dude you know but obviously with covid stuff has been a bit out of sync especially with the lack of gym i've noticed now especially i think most people are the same in it i think i've noticed how reliant i was with the gym in terms of providing a kind of framework for my week now it doesn't didn't mean i'd go there every day but it would allow me um to have the discipline needed monday to friday to do something so if i went on a monday to the gym most likely i was going for a run on a tuesday it provided some framework but without the framework i feel like i'm scrambling um or i'm trying my i'm really having to try really hard to get up in the morning to go out for a run and that never happened before before it just would have been an automatic thing don't get me wrong i still be tired in the morning i still be a bit lethargic but but it wouldn't be me having to kind of peel myself off of my duvet and get you know begrudgingly put my shoes on like I was doing today in the morning like I felt like you know just I wouldn't say angry but you know you feel a bit like oh, wow why the hell am I doing this but I needed it I really did um you know I've, I've had way too many big tasties at the moment that's come back on the McDonald's menu at home so I've been banging out that Uber Eats and smashing that out I needed to get back on that wagon and make sure that I was stable going forward and just give me a, you know I, things just got to our hand you know put on too much weight i think most people have done this right during covid um but i'm not really a big fan of it i don't really like being bigger i much prefer being sliv- slivet slivet slim slim whatever slim so i can fit into my fashion clothes um that's just basically my name and my game and to be honest as well i just feel more comfortable that way um i think as a dude it's probably advantageous to be a little bit bigger because i think you have a little more presence right you feel as if like people know you've arrived but i quite like to be i quite like to go unnoticed especially if i'm not speaking i'm already quite a outgoing person as it is the last thing i need is to match this voice and this kind of personality with a big frame i just think it's too much and the size of my head and the size of my hair so i quite like to be smaller in my body so i can just you know somehow keep my thing contained my personality somewhat keep it you know um it's like putting a lid on popcorn when you're making it on the stove that's what i'm basically doing by uh, making sure i'm more slim it but obviously when i'm bigger it's like putting it's like having a smaller lid for a bigger pot it's like all popping up all over the place so um yeah and i just enjoy it to be honest as well like i'm into fashion i like clothes you just can't fit into bigger you just can't fit into the clothes that i like being big you know as much as i'd like to i'd love to look like simian panda right you're just not going to be able to wear the stuff that i like with your his size don't get me wrong you can still wear clothes right you can wear you can you know because he's an influencer i'm pretty sure he probably can make his own brand i'm pretty sure his companies out there will send him clothes that's been tailored or has stretchy fibers and shit but i don't want to wear you know elasticated clothing to fit over my incredible big biceps i'd rush my other just wear something that's on a rack and have it you know fit a bit snug so you see the shape and the form so you know what i'll go on but i don't want to have to go you know all bespoke and all uh, big and tall on that because i don't think that's my vibrant and it just doesn't match my overall silhouette i think the whole like you know 
it's slim silhouette suits me a bit better but of course unfortunately like most people um the best option for me to, for the weight to just fall off is number one diet which is a bit it's easy i thought so far i'm gonna i'm doing the slow carb thing from tim ferris so that's 30 days of basically you know minimal carbs and stuff and you know having a cheat day on the saturday um up in the protein up in the legumes um all that good stuff so it's a pretty decent easy to go diet. i've done it a few times but then the thing that really helps as well is the cardio and at the moment as well with it being so cold and with there being no gym to sort of offset because i think i was I think I was so dedicated or so able to do cardio so often because I had the gym to offset it, right? I kind of had something to, like, I kind of did the running begrudgingly, but then I went to the gym happy. So I kind of had, you know, it was like a to and fro, like I had like a little reward for doing the run. I can go to the gym the next day. And now without it, it's just like running, running, running all the time. It's like, God damn it. But it does work. Do you know what I mean? It really does work for me. If I feel like the weight just comes off really, really easily. But again, it's going to be a hard, hard slog, man. Hard slog. I've let myself go in a big way during lockdown. <laughs> but um, I can't wait to share the transformation picture. Um, hopefully by the time, what, it'll probably be by about June, July. I think I'll be exactly where I want to be. Um, I'll get down to about 190, which I've been before prior. Probably about 200 I could probably get um, and keep that as a steady weight. But, you know, I've still got a long way to go. But, yeah, I can't wait to post. I'm for sure I'm going to get mad amount of likes. That's going to go off on your IG. Even though I don't post on there too much it's going to be some good content to share so um yeah man that's basically me for the time being and of course what i've been doing watching loads of documentaries loads of series and movies trying to detach myself from watching or keeping an eye on all the new stuff it gets a bit depressing after a while i think most of you guys are probably the same you know keep you know just keep subjecting yourself to the news constantly just you just want to shoot your brains out so i've been pulling away from that a bit and just focusing more on the documentaries and all the cultural stuff to kind of keep my brain ticking and that's been about it really um you know just 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 trying to just trying to keep myself ticking man just trying to keep myself ticking as everyone else is during this time what else can we do what else can we do anyway let's get into the show we've got loads of stuff to get into i've got my mug here of tea hopefully you got your drink with you grab something to drink get yourself a little munch and let's dive on deep first story to get into um trump decided to um come out of his bunker and give a statement to the nation about the protest i guess post protest and we should be surprised really in it by his statement he basically as you can see from the quote here from the youtube it says um trump says the um, the response oh no his his speech was totally appropriate he takes no responsibility but we shouldn't be surprised i remember at the height of covid when he was kind of backed into a corner a little bit regarding his response to covid you know and again don't get me wrong the press do kind of you know they do sort of look for sound bites and they look to kind of trigger him and get him to you know respond in a certain way but they kind of gave him a bit of a platform to say hey I take some responsibility. We're going to do what we can to come back. I don't know, something, right? Something presidential. And instead he just said, I take no responsibility at all. It's not my fault. We didn't do nothing wrong. You know, um, dark side field style, right? I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. And he just kind of didn't, you know, basically brush it aside as if like, this is not his, this is not my job. He's also scientist. And he's done the same sort of thing now post, um, protest he still has not res accepted responsibility for it he's still sort of um feigning ignorance and essentially telling people that hey um everything i said was completely appropriate here's what he said um again he does that thing where he always has i think it's a distraction technique in it right he always had these press conferences um next to the helicopter or wherever he's gonna take to go um you know the with the flipping propellers you know spinning really loudly and the uh, reporters have to like shout and scream and he's obviously shouting and screaming back to them too it must be a tactic to sort of kind of this um to disarm them somewhat and it's it works pretty effectively because the, the press conferences are never that long it's always like 15 minutes or something tops and he just kind of ducks out so this is this is to trump's response and um him basically saying i'm not responsible for anything never seen such anger as i see right now and that's a terrible thing terrible thing and you have to always avoid violence and coming into the country for many many years and decades don trump has emerged from seclusion after days of his supporters stormed the capital en route to the mexican border the outgoing president took the responsibility for the violence
Big tech has made a terrible mistake and very, very bad for our country. And that's leading others to do the same thing. And it causes a lot of problems and a lot of danger. What I said was totally appropriate. And if you look at what other people have said, politicians at a high level, that was a real problem, what they said. So again, I think this is this maybe gives more credence to this idea of impeaching him. I think um again I'm not too you know clear on the politics, but the twenty fifth amendment, they're gonna try and make sure they put that through so that basically stops him from running again and then obviously brings forth maybe some legal proceedings. I don't know, whatever, right? They're doing their best to basically hold him accountable for the things that he said, um, because they want to dissuade anybody else that comes after him from adopting the same tactics they just can't have that right they gotta have some kind of rule of law and at first i thought it's a bit overboard it's not necessary he's leaving um the presidency what in less than 10 days if anything the best thing for america to the best thing for america to heal you'd think is for them just to kind of move on from the trump era because i think as much as they like to especially democrats they like to kind of pin the blame at the republicans completely i think they've both sides have been complicit in this division in the country it feels like there's a real split there's no unity at all whatsoever and it feels like i wouldn't say they're using him as a scapegoat but i think that they play, they're pinning way too much on trump and not enough on how both parties have played what they've what role they've played in this whole debacle and how they basically contribute to all this i think this is probably the time where both parties should come together and say hey we need to make sure we reconcile come together heal the nation at least for the first two years and it just to kind of get um, america back on its feet and have some good sentiment out there because if they just i feel like if they keep pursuit pers pursuing this legal proceedings especially with the people that like trump the guys that stormed the, co the, the capitol building they're obviously not going to let up right they've they've obviously heard the the speech of their leader they've probably seen how unrepentant he is they're definitely going to keep going for it but now i've changed my mind because of his response i do think it's probably within america's best interest that they do whatever they can to get to as far as they can in the legal courts um to quote unquote punish him and hold him accountable because you just can't go on like this isn't it a guy died and a police officer died right forget the uh, of course fair enough let's say he can say which is bad to say but imagine he said the protesters are dispensable right you know cool but are you gonna say the cops are dispensable the police officers who only a few months ago everyone was heralding as you know not bad people only a few bad apples da -da 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 -da, and he was obviously being a very big proponent in law and order he can't you know just turn around and be okay with the police officer dying at the hands of protesters that he inadvertently sent to go riot there and if you think i'm being um if you think i'm being hyperbolic i dare you to check out this video right there's this video here um of this guy who is sent let me see here where's the guy there's this guy right who's basically one of the people that might have been responsible allegedly for um killing the police officer um inadvertently via you know hitting him over the head with a you know pole that he had with a flag and stuff so this is the video of the dude talking now death is the only remedy for what's in that building well and let's you need to stand up over. and you need your scrap everybody in there is a treasonous traitor and then so that's the guy outside the capitol building for the podcast listeners and then the next scene is the next video of uh a video taken of the protesters um it looks like hitting somebody that's basically um on the floor lifeless and it's a police officer that basically ends up dying there they're just smacking him over the head with the pole and that's him there lifeless not moving unresponsive so with that being said and with those kind of shocking images like it just feels like there's no other route they have to take but to try to take it as far as they can in the courts now whether or not that would actually you know anything will come of it who's to know i think somebody like trump has probably got a lot of people in the right places that he that will basically owe him a favor or two so he's probably going to end up squirming his way out of it squirming his way out of it don't get me wrong but i do think he needs to be held responsible at least for the riots at least for the insurrection at least for that kind of crazy you know um uprising that occurred just in that specifically now he can't be blamed for the division of the country overall i think this has been brewing in the background right even though the dems don't want to admit it i think they didn't help the cause either 
but there definitely needs to be a kind of um a fork put in a, 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 a statement needs to be made hey we don't allow this right do you know what i mean this is not how you um govern this is not how you lead this is not how you know this is not something that's presidential it's not something we want to see repeated ever again and they have to kind of go for it really again if it, whether or not it happens who's to say but there definitely needs to be some action taken in that regard and then moving on what else do we have here this is funny let's move on to this one <laughs> so um you know i love my good um i love my good public freak out videos and there's no none better than the ones where they sort of you know go to like a you know uh what do they call them a supermarket right like a target a walmart a trader joe's those are always the best because usually the people working there are like regular folk like you and i just trying to make a living put some food on the table keep the lights on you know uh, put some clothes on their back they're not there to die for the company they just want to do their job peacefully and go home and they usually just do what they're told they're not the ones sort of like you know uh writing down the rules or making up the procedures or the protocols they just get told from head office and then they enact them in the store so when these maskless karens decide to come into the store and cause a ruckus and basically use it as a moment to basically fight for their rights um to free expression or whatever nonsense it is it's always an interesting exchange because there's a real disconnect between these people's fight which you know again as funny as i think it is um there is maybe some merit to something that they're saying because they believe it right they believe this idea that you don't need to wear a mask and this is all a man-made thing it's overblown it's as it's not as bad as a cold bloody blah 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 but this is such the it's, it, it seems like such a ineffective way of convincing people because you're not you're not really going to the head you're not going to the decision makers you're just attacking regular shop floor managers right assistant managers supervisors um security guards who have nothing to do with the decision making process this comes way 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 above their heads and it's such a i guess waste of time right and it's a poor allocation of time especially during covid right when you've seen you know we've taken time for granted we've taken the things that we enjoyed our freedoms for granted if ever there was a time to maybe savor every moment you have with your family and friends this would be it instead these guys are in you know outside of a trader joe's pick, picking a fight with somebody just trying to earn a regular wage so it's the video here of a maskless uh, protester harassing a trader joe employee and it, you know let the hilarity ensue How's it going, guys? Good, how good, are you? Good, good. <laughs> yeah, how about you? You gotta love some fake pleasantries, right? <laughs> well, having worked in retail, I know exactly how this guy feels, right? You just have to just, you know, the dickhead. You can, working in retail, you can spot the dickheads from afar. You can see them coming. You just, oh, God, this is gonna be a long day. And it, and it always happens. Guess what? It happens usually the day before you're going on holiday, um, the night before Boxing Day sales just before you're about to close that's always the time that you get the most annoying of annoying customers coming into your store demanding this demanding that it never it, it never ceases to amaze me good, good. Good. i know what you guys are here i know you guys we're are here to shop absolutely yeah, yeah. Totally understand. peacefully shop totally just, you know, fine. household no, groceries no problem if you guys want to shop no problem if you guys just want to grab your groceries Okay. Oh, good. Maintain the distance, be polite and respectful, and respect other people's rights because we don't want special treatment. We just want to be honored as yeah. shoppers. Oh, good. Oh, you, right? Thank, you. Thank you. I understand all that, truly. Thank you. And like I was telling <laughs> your friends over there, I. Why do they make them wear these weird Hawaii shirts in Trader Joe's? Can someone get me, let me know about that in the comments? Like, what, what's that about? I want to tell you guys what to think, what to do, what to believe, anything like that. Yeah, we honor that. I just, I would ask kindly that you guys understand here at TJ's and what we're doing, we're just trying to work, make a living. Uh, hey, I you know, get it, absolutely. The difference absolutely. you guys are trying to make isn't gonna be made with us. We're, what you, be we're just shopping. With your government. Well, no, 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 we're no, just I'm shopping. Saying, exactly. I'm not talking about the shopping, I'm yeah. not talking about that what you guys true. You're right. Totally understand. This guy's way more reasonable than I would ever be. He's, a spl he's basically telling them that, hey, I know you guys have a fight and if I don't even agree with what you're fighting for, I get it. 
but this isn't the place for you to have your fight if you want to go have your fight go to the head office um sequester somebody that it makes the decisions in a local park go and picket their houses whatever right put a petition in but come into protest me at my workplace whilst i'm just trying to earn a living and keep the lights on isn't a good use of my your time and it's definitely not a good use of my time We're you just about have that. I am not here to debate policy here. I totally exactly. Good. respect your freedom to think whatever you guys want to think. Okay. By all means, true, Great. I believe that. We're demonstrating to that. And you, you have guys, right. We're not demonstrating. We're, we're buying groceries. That's why I'm here. We're buying all groceries. My responsibility. You gotta love that voice. Yeah. It's enforce a mandate whether you guys believe in that but mandate or it's law. not a law. No, you can't enforce non law. No, you can't. That's, uh, you. You know what's funny too, I think? Um, do you remember ages ago there was that really big issue in America with that whole um, bakery that didn't want to make a cake for a gay couple that would get married or something right there's a big kerfuffle happening about that and people saying oh they should and I think there's a lot of mostly uh, people that would kind of abide by this whole mask, um, maskless thing and you know it's not bad as a flu those very same people are the ones that are saying oh it's a private business they should be allowed to make a cake for whomever they want to make a cake for right and that was the debate going on it's like but no you can't just deny somebody a cake do you know what i mean like either you make the cake for everybody or nobody but you can't just deny people cakes because you don't believe you're not believing in their um, way of life that just isn't the way to go it's not very american right but there's some people of course saying no this is it it's private business they have the right to do whatever they want cool whatever the debate moved on but those very same people are now the ones who are saying you can't enforce law in a store even if it's a mandate, even if it's a private business, they're not allowed to request that you wear a face covering. But the bakery is allowed to deny a gay couple a wedding cake. Tell me how that makes sense. Cannot deny somebody the right to commerce. Okay, I'm sorry. I know, I know you. Oh, wait a minute. So they're going in. Wait a minute, but you're letting them in. Yes, they can. Yeah, that's what Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. He starts very. And that's the thing that always happens, unfortunately, when you're working in retail. You're very um, accommodating, you're very well mannered. You try your best to do the, and usually as well you have to understand especially for me i've worked in i've worked in stores for a long time especially footwear stores for the most part you're only being nice because you're getting paid you're not being nice because you want to right there are some times when you are being nice because you want to give the person a good experience i've usually done that when it's always been like single moms with kids and stuff i try to make sure the kids are occupied give them a bit of respite you know what i mean that was always quite fun let them have a smile on their face or if there's a kid that I could see myself in, right? Someone that was like, you know, I could recognize, oh, I, I was like that when I was that age. I try and make it a good thing. If there's a dude that came in and had no idea what he was buying, I kind of wanted to be a bit of a help and provide him with the information that he needed. So next time you can make an informed decision. There were some times, but for the most part, when you're working in these places, you just make, you're just being nice because you don't want to get fired. You're being nice because so you, so you can get your paid in the, the month, which isn't that much, especially if you work in the service industry, right? You get paid by the hour. You essentially can't take any public holidays. If you take a holiday, you're not earning money, right? You just, you, whatever it may be. So you just do what you can to make sure that you can have a job the next day. That's it. So when you get into these sort of tiffs, it's just, it just reminds you why you need to, most of the time, especially if you're not making, if you don't want to make a career in retail, it kind of reminds you why you need to do something else. It's a constant reminder that, God damn it, man. Why am I here? Why am I subjecting myself to this? And it's always, usually, it's never young people. It's always adults that should know better that are giving you the most grief. It's never people that you would imagine to be a bit of a ball ache, like your spotty nose teenager. No, it's always adults. It's always people that have like kids that might be even the same age as you who are the ones giving you the most grief. And it just, it just uh, it drives me crazy. No, 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 no. Have a but you let no, you let those people in. We yes, all we want to do is shop. Have a conversation with you. I'm just but asking that we can you The stupidity is just insane. The idiocity is inside. No, you can't. No, 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 no. I, we we need to shop. No, no we need to shop. So so either we go. No, you're not. You are you are a place of public accommodation. You can be privately owned, but if you have shopping hours, then we have a right to come. In. No. No, that's not true. You're violating Oregon statute. You're and um, and this is the thing too you have to do, right? When somebody's just talking complete 
bullshit to you just to nod long and just hope they leave that's it just yeah okay yes yes madam yes 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 you're just nodding along hoping that they go oh i've never honestly man bless these guys that work in these industries in these stores during covid honestly they 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 deserve a pay rise if, if anyone deserves a pay rise it's those guys for the most part in most countries you know supermarkets and shops have remained open um you know they've essentially allowed us to us me and you to make sure we have food in our fridges and stuff and stuff in our pantry and for the most part they're putting themselves at risk every single day they probably don't get you know adequate ppe um so or, or adequate you know protection whatever it may be um and they just sort of left out there for the wolves you know and all the people in the head office what are they doing I don't know i don't know but what can you do what can you do next on the list we have news in the uk and i guess um the news in the uk hasn't been that great to be fair numbers are skyrocketing still i saw the other day that cases are up by a 13 point something percent there was a rumor going around that supposedly they were going to make the rules stricter because at the moment now we're in a national lockdown um which effectively means you you know you that you're discouraged to go to work <clears throat> all non-essential shops are closed um and we're basically going to be in this extended lockdown until they said probably the middle of february is going to be the first review and if that's the numbers aren't down you know drastically by then we're going to continue on to probably the beginning of march so that's basically where we're basically at but um there was a rumor that they were going to tighten those restrictions even more by putting into place a curfew and also limiting the amount of times you can leave your house i think they said you can only leave your house once per day and you can only go to a shop one per person like yeah only one person per household can go to a shop at a one time so um uh, obviously to kind of stem the spread of covid as much as they can especially with this new strain that's out there but there's been another piece of news which again is a rumor but something you know especially in the uk with covid whenever stuff gets leaked to the press especially some of the ragtag um broadsheets out there it's usually an indication of what's kind of been spoken about you know in government and this news courtesy here of joe says the following pubs could remain shut until may under current covid um lockdown restrictions so i think my initial guess when i was specking this out especially when i was thinking about the times and the lack of enthusiasm when it comes to the vaccine earlier on was that more than likely we're not going to have any semblance of normality until you know 2022 january going forward but then obviously things changed a little bit. They had that target of making sure they vaccinate, what is it, um, 2 million people per week in order to kind of get us to some, you know, decent number in terms of the R number and um, to make sure, you know, uh, uh, the people that are the most vulnerable are vaccinated. So that basically changed my timeline. I thought, hmm, if that's the case and we're in lockdown as well, which will help in terms of um, decreasing the spread of the virus, I could see as potentially um opening up in terms of um you know now with lockdown i guess lockdown from the next level down will be tier four and then from there tier three two and one which is the least lockdowns so i can see us going to tier four maybe by the end of june um but with this news it seems like we have to push it back a bit further again to maybe september um because um pubs as you will know in the uk are an institution so if they deems the pubs to be um, a potential super spreader um, location and they want to keep them closed until may that definitely means that the numbers are far worse and the projections are far worse than we've been led to believe um, which again super super scary in terms of overall freedoms to move and do whatever we need to do that uh, this is occurring at this rate and and maybe another indictment of just how poorly this government has dealt with covid especially when you consider that just a few weeks ago they were considering letting us go on a five-day break to enjoy christmas because um it would be inhumane as boris said not to enjoy christmas this year and it's just and it only got stopped or pulled at the last minute thank god right imagine how bad it would have been now if we would have had to do that because you know it was it was, a, it was a stupid mandate anyway because the people that wanted to go and celebrate christmas with their family would have gone anyway this whole giving you know announcing it was just a stupid way to go about things but i digress this is the article here from joe it says the following um it could be nearly five months until your next pint it has been reported that pubs in england could be closed until may as current lockdown rules continue a source told the sunday times that the may day bank holiday is more likely a moment to see pubs reopening which again will be a good for branding right um they could um spell they could kind of note that as like the time for us to, they could actually use that as opportunity to 
to kind of rewrite the narrative, make people forget about all the bullshit they've done prior, especially if they say, hey, you're free to just like hang out with everybody you want to because most people are vaccinated, but just keep your, just be aware that you don't get too close to people, right? They could basically enact that. So I can definitely see that happening. It continues. Under the current lockdown restrictions, hospitality venues, including cafes, restaurants and pubs and bars can offer takeaway food and non-alcoholic drinks until 11 p.m. But not alcoholic drinks, which again is, you know, insane because people are still going out to these places. But hey, that means takeaway pints, a common sight during the 20th, 2021 are not permitted. So during summer 2020 are not permitted. All food and drink, including alcohol, can continue to be provided by delivery present. Under the previous systems of tiers, pubs in tier one could still open under the rule of six of a household mixing. It has now changed as England has entered another national lockdown. The people in England are now being told to stay at home only to go out for essential purposes, such as food shopping or medical reasons. They are also being told to work from home if it's at all possible. The latest media campaign for the government is urging people to act like you've got it. The future looks bleak for for many hospitality venues with the campaign for real ale um camera calling a ban on takeaway pints during the lockdown as a death knell to many pubs this will once again provide an unfair advantage to supermarkets not license that don't face similar restrictions which of course is very true and that's maybe the the bleak side of things right like when stuff does when it does reopen let's say the may day thing is true what pubs are going to be left open anyway right which ones are still going to be left standing after spending what close to no just over a year and a bit maybe a year and a half having so much interruption to their supply chain to their business hours to their ability to sell right it's just i just can't imagine how they've been able to kind of stay afloat maybe it's furlough is helping them a lot government grants loans and whatever it may be but jesus christ man what a hit to take and again nothing's been confirmed we've got no date They've, they've set no target really they've not come out and i guess a lot of it is because the government are scared of making another mistake and predicting something falsely before or predicting something or being too what's that thing called um being too you know go, go, go forward to something where maybe they're not too sure about it but i think in terms of moving forward i think the best possible thing to do would be to announce a date um a kind of stretch goal that they had in mind about what when they aim to kind of get life to some less semblance of normality and if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen but they're sort of like um leaking bits of information out to the press seeing what the reception is and then going back to a drawing board and then the numbers you know increase and then you have to change your plans again doesn't seem like the most um uh um sensible way to go about doing something like this and again it seems a bit counterintuitive i think but hey who knows hopefully we see um some changes in numbers especially with lockdown things go down some in some regard so that we can get back to some semblance sort of normality sometime very soon because i'm sure like you guys you've had enough of doing this shit i know i have next on the list what else do we have here Beer, 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 beer. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. Oh, um, yeah, let's go here. Aria have redesigned their website. You seen this? Aria have redesigned their website, and to me personally, it looks like absolute dog shit. Maybe it's just me, and maybe I'm over exaggerated, and people don't really give a shit and don't check. Because again, maybe I'm the only person that actually checks websites. Because a lot of people get their news from actual social media accounts, right? You just follow them on there, and they post the same info they're posting on the main website on your social media feed right that might be a thing but i don't know man i'm not really feeling this at all like it looks a bit crap personally um maybe it's going in the kind of direction that most music sites are going in this sort of like weird squashed into the middle thing um the font style the way the pictures are laid out but i quite like the old design i thought the design looked far better than this um and they could obviously put up their reasonings here as to why they decided to change it it says yari launches a new website it's now easier than ever before to discover new artists music and events it's sort of laid out specifically with mobile in mind which maybe is an indication as to how many people how how many people actually check the website <laughs> as opposed to browse it via their mobile phones um so i'm probably in the minority 
it says here when we've launched a new website as you can see we've completely rebuilt the redesigned ra this project our first major change since 2014 has been more than two years in the making we've redesigned and rebuilt the site's core technology we are preserving our 20-year archive of artists events related and editorial content which is pretty cool because sometimes they you know they'll redesign a site and just kind of you know forego all the old archive um uh bits and pieces that you kind of know and love in favor of just a whole new direction so that's cool to see the site was originally planned to go live in May 2020. However, devastating impact of COVID and the music industry made that impossible. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, let's see what I said here. Um, why RA uh, rebuilt the site? Parts of the previous site were more than a decade old. The new RA represents a significant update in technology that powers RA from today. This allows you to develop new features faster um, and support the needs of the electronic music community. We will not know you will not notice anything has missing. We are focused on platform evolution at the core of the products and service to utilize the users. It, this reorganization and streamlining is instrumental in laying the foundations of the future of development. So what does the new site do? The new site is clearer organization of RA ultimately makes discovering new music and events better. Our new design um, system elevates the content we produce to feature on the site. We've redesigned how your event pages work. These pages can now be include mixes and YouTube videos. Oh, this is pretty cool. That's very, very cool um going forward because that was one thing that was really odd sometimes you couldn't especially in the descriptions you couldn't click links and sometimes people i know myself because i'm I, you know I, I would uh, promote nights or i would organize my own nights prior to this devastating virus but i know when i did mine you'd have to sometimes change the event link on the side maybe to a instagram page or a facebook page or whatever whatever page you wanted people to bounce from but there was no way of kind of you know if, if you book somebody and you weren't just in hyperlink their name with the latest mix you couldn't do so so the fact that they can do that is pretty interesting going forward um said we've also rebuilt artist club promoter festival and label pages with the aim of making them more dynamic and interactive it's now simpler than ever to submit proposals for features oh awesome news and reviews that's pretty cool for people going forward and if you're interested in writing for us we've created a guide to pitching to ra here how long have you been working on the site it's taken us more than two years to create the site almost every employee contributing what's the grants council grant two years no the site is a completely better version that's funny because people were harassing them for that grant so good of them to clarify that but how are we to know if that's true or not why this design we try to simplify design on the site and make it as accessible as possible to all users i'm an artist what does it mean for me artists and labels that have brand new profiles and imagery options so you can better represent yourself i'm a promoter what does this mean for me promoters have a brand new section called ra pro to manage their events oh you have to do you have, is that signing up thing the ra pro let's see that you have to pay for this that's maybe the little Oh no, it's not. Okay, cool. Maybe you don't have to. I'm not too sure there. And once you've had a chance to spend time on a new site, we'd love to hear from you in the community. Now, the only thing I'd say, again, speaking out loud about this stuff, is the lack of um the lack of um comments still is still a problem for me. A big part of this site that made it incredible and what basically got me into dance music in the first place, discovering all these great artists, was the fact that you could go to an event like this place, right? You could scroll down and it'd be a whole comment section of lively people who've been to the party themselves or previous ones talking about the promoter, talking about the event itself, talking about DJs playing. And sometimes after the event, people would go back and write a review and it'd give you a fair indication of who was, because maybe it's not, maybe it's just me, but in the UK, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, charlatans in the nightlife scene, right? People that put events on and don't essentially uh, put their best foot forward. They do it as a bit of a cash grab. Um, they bill it as one thing and it's another. They oversell it. Like loads of really backhandy, you know, um, kind of corrupty sort of things, right? Standard pro protocol for a promoter, myself being one in the past as well. I know how people kind of get down. So I thought in my experience or in my opinion, the comments help people responsible. They were a good litmus test for you to see people that were, you know, not there for the right reasons. People that are putting events on um, in a shady way. And usually, again, there were some trolls on the, on the, on the comments. So let me get me wrong. But in terms of moderating it yourself, especially when you kind of upvote comments, whatever it may be, there was a real um, thriving community there. And again, I think it brought the best out of a lot of people. I think, uh, you know, parties like Toy Toy, right? 
they were they basically popped off on ra basically due to the comments that they used to get on there right like oh my god these guys went over and beyond the sound system was incredible um we didn't have to queue too long great security guards all those glowing reviews basically added to the allure of this kind of underground um secret kind of like needs needs to know kind of party in terms of toys right? even places i used to kind of take photographs at when i used to be a bit of a club photographer for love fever right love fever got a bit of its kind of um initial bump from the ra comments too that kind of contributed to it. and again i just think it kind of it's not similar to facebook because you know facebook is a little bit of a shit show but it kind of elevated the conversation somewhat because a lot of the people that were on the comments sort of took themselves seriously they were really about the music really about the scene so they wanted to contribute in some sort of meaningful way to the conversation or just kind of spam it and i thought that was a really good option and again it's a it's a real shame it's not on there a lot of the reasonings behind it are quite I don't know a nonsense and bullshit it seems like a couple of DJs basically got annoyed that they were getting harassed or maybe you know weren't getting kind comments on some of their RA mixes or interviews but I think that's a m nature of the beast there's a lot of kind of meme accounts out there that take the piss out of certain people but again I think with good moderation you can eliminate a lot of that stuff and in general you just have to take the rough with a smooth having a platform that just basically speaks in one direction and doesn't get anything back this doesn't seem like the most conducive thing to building a sustainable scene um it just seems like a bit like hey we're gonna give you what we give you and you take it or you don't they could say oh we got comments open on instagram on facebook but that's not the same no one cares a shit about that the comments on instagram are terrible so are the ones on facebook putting them actually on your website again elevates the conversation allows people to interact and engage with it and actually quote unquote builds a scene not just this weird kind of platform we just post we want to post that's my own opinion on it but again maybe i'm freaking out and it's not that big of an issue it's just a website let me know what you think in the comments down below but again it's a shame man it's a good thing they kept all the original um original archive of you know features and editorials and whatnot but i would have preferred them to bring back the comments because without that ra is basically missing a huge chunk of its appeal in my humble opinion next let's move on i'm gonna race through a couple of these topics oh yeah let's go it's going this one them um, uh, have you guys seen the kamala harris vogue cover do you guys give a crap i do in passing i guess there's a lot of there's a lot of um hoopla about it on the social media feed it was quite funny because i think a lot of people were basically getting annoyed because i think at first everyone thought it was annie Leibovitz that took the pictures and she, she's had a bit of a um weird We'll say fall from grace but she's not exactly i guess received that well online i don't know what it is maybe because she's white maybe because her photographs are pretty shit and the last ones i think she did maybe with serena williams people weren't too fond of them they weren't lit, lit properly there's a whole conversation around um the lack of expertise with um caucasian photographers in terms of lighting skin color that isn't white or whatever it may be or it's a bit darker bloody blah 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 um and initially everyone thought the images were done by annie Leibovitz. it obviously wasn't it was done by this other um photographer a black dude new yorker i forgot his name tyler something right i think it is right so that, that was quite funny to see people walk it back but in terms of actual images uh, this is the main image i think for the actual cover itself it's pretty terrible isn't it um again putting aside kamala harris's politics because you can get into that another day you know, wearing skinny jeans on a Vogue cover with a blazer and a pair of Converse's is just, again, it's just polit politicians, man. Like this whole kind of like, it's like, um, this is like the, this is like the female version of like, you know, male politicians where, where they're trying to look like they're getting to work. They don't wear a tie and they roll up their sleeves to kind of send a uh, subliminal message that they're kind of going to get their hands dirty. And this might be the way to sort of um, show that you are just like me and you, right? I'm an, I'm a, you know, um, what, what, they, what they call themselves. Um, she's a person of color as well, right? Um, she comes from the struggle. Um, she knows what it is to live the life that you're living. So here she is wearing a pair of skinny jeans and some cons. She's going to go get the work done. She doesn't take herself too seriously. Um, it's about giving back to the people, blah, blah, blah. But again, it is also weird because it's a really good mixture of like business casual or smart casual. I think it was an episode of In Between is where like um, smart casual, casual smart, smart casual. Maybe it was an advert. It looks kind of like that, right? The top half looks like, you know, very you know i don't know i don't guess i don't say regal but very uh well done and then the bottom half is just like and then she's got the weird jola puma hands here the annoying hands oh you don't know what to do with your hands you put them in a weird position just a very very bizarre cover to do 
um especially when you consider how they're trying to paint this as like such a mom momentous thing and you know again no one's kind of talking about um kamala harris's political um or, or especially her her history in the cause prior to this so they point out to one side and just kind of propping up the fact that she's a person of color um that she's a woman first woman vice president blah 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 you'd imagine the first cover would be a little bit more stately like which is what you get in the alternate cover which i much prefer this cover is way better right it's her like in a sky blue suit um very well done uh an american pin placed there on one of her lapels the hair even suits the outfit more because i think with this outfit that's sort of like wafty sort of 50s american mum thing wife next door hair doesn't really suit the outfit but with this outfit it looks really really good and also it hides the, sh the the shoes you don't get to see it the only thing that's odd is the bit behind it looks like a coffin or is that meant to be a kitchen table that's a bit odd too right she's in the kitchen standing in front of a curtain i don't know what that is all about but maybe it's just a set design but i think the second cover the alternate cover is much better but i think this attempt for her to be somewhat relatable just doesn't come off that well um skinny jeans ankle showing i don't know man it's just a very dated look for somebody older that's the thing is that it's not a look that you'd want to see an older politician um especially a woman wear right you'd want to kind of make it seem a little bit you kind of want to act like you've been here before is that right maybe is that right yeah act like you've been here before don't act like you know this whole gimmick just doesn't work you know what i mean it just no one believes it it's a very strange choice to do so yeah um interesting cover nonetheless again i would per much prefer the second cover i think it just fits a lot better um she obviously looks much better in it as well um and overall considering what they're trying to paint this moment as this probably fits the occasion a lot better than the first but hey you've got to do what you have to do in it let me know in the comments below what your cover you like the best if you don't like any of them i'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter next we move on burger king have redesigned their visual identity and it looks pretty pretty cool um this is courtesy of hypebeast it says burger king has revealed a bold new visual identity where they basically changed the uh, overall branding um and artwork that goes on the wrapping and the packaging and the trays of their fast food and it looks really interesting so today burger king has debuted an entirely new visual identity with its first top to bottom rebrand in over 20 years which is insane announcement today the fast food chain revealed a modernized look which encompasses all aspects of the customer experience with packaging to uniforms and of course a new logo burger king customers will see the new beginnings to these new changes begin to roll out as soon as early next year the company aims to have a redesign implement to this worldwide location within the next few years which is it's actually incredible how well some of these big fast food chains are able to implement these rebrands and you know merchandising things you know across the board in all countries it's really really incredible the fact that you can go to like a mcdonald's in or a burger king in indonesia and one in texas and get the exact same sort of like and experience the same um sensory things right same branding colors really makes you kind of feel at home i think they do at mcdonald's right that's what they want it to be they want it to feel familiar wherever you go so you kind of feel like you're kind of grounded in the city um again maybe it's not a good idea right if you go to a, a really exotic country the first thing you do is go to mcdonald's but i understand the familiarity it sort of breeds and um this rebrand looks really cool really fresh really clean um again i just wish there was some sort of rebrand in the quality of the produce because Burger King, especially in the UK, the quality is so terrible and it's so inconsistent depending on what location you go to. Um, you don't ever, I, I've been to maybe three or four. I, I, I haven't eaten in Burger King in maybe years, like an actual meal meal. It's been a long, long time, but the times I've gone, I've had, you know, such different experiences, um, such different in terms of levels of quality. For the most part, the the, the, the two times I have, because I've gone, yeah, in recent years, the two times I have gone were basically kind of way back from an airport. I've usually found the airport my Burger Kings to be a lot better than the ones I find like in city centers. And I have, again, no idea why the quality control varies so badly. Um, It's way worse. It's a, it's a much more of an issue at Burger King than it's at McDonald's. I find McDonald's consistency is pretty cool across the board. Um, But I don't know why for some reason it's just even a small thing that like the fries one location you could get a pack of fries and there's like 
10 in there another location they're all inside a bag there's no consistency whatsoever with it um it continues here Burger King has said its rebrand signals its commitment to making a strong digital first impression and it's designed to reflect a recent commitment to food quality following the removal of artificial colors flavors and preservatives as well as its recent pledge to environmental sustainability that's the buzzword for everyone going forward in it environmental sustainability it continues the company states this redesign will also touch restaurants merchandise decor signage and menu boards as well as external social marketing assets so here's a few of the bits and pieces that they've basically done here on the screen they've got here a spread of all the base all the food items and packaging the crown the iconic crown the trays here um they've got the uniforms which look pretty cool i love the hat i love this little is that a bomber jacket or is that a vest i wonder what that is that looks pretty nice i wonder if they'll sell the actual uniform that'll be interesting isn't it? if they sell them on store if they sell them online in the store because there's a lot of people there was a period in time in the uk where people were wearing the royal mail bags as a messenger bag there's a time in there was a time in place where people were wearing what else was it the people that sell um delivery um uh rain jackets and backpacks and stuff some people wear them around time some people wear them just because they want to get a, as soon as they get a job with delivery but i think you get one free right when you sign up to be a career but i know that was a big thing so i wonder if they'll end up selling it or they'll end up doing collaborations like what mcdonald's did you know mcdonald's were doing all these cool collaborations um you know last year obviously travis scott jay balvin and a few other people i wonder if burger king are going to enter the fray and do the exactly the same thing curious because they did do some trolley marketing thing prior right do you remember when they did that thing with katie neister and maybe maybe let's see who knows um uh, up there on a the logo again you it, it's odd in it the moment you see a new logo it makes the old logo look very dated right like you don't really see this sort of like um what do you call it shading design thing anymore in in artwork or in pieces of um visual identity pieces for a brand this is more of the contemporary style this sort of like flat um you know almost static sort of image as opposed to this sort of thing that looks like it's in motion right um that's what you get and obviously a few more saturated colors not as bright as the previous ones again a change in the signage that looks really really cool that kind of it, it looks very contemporary but also looks very um old as well it sort of reminds you of a of yesteryears of a time you know when um, America was the land of the free, home of the brave, right? It sort of has that appeal to it. Um, the redesign of the uh, out the outside of the Burger King, I guess, the exterior. I'm assuming they could probably just change the colors of the beams and stuff, but most of the other things. That's probably why this, even though most modern day architecture for fast food restaurants is a bit bland and it's a little bit, it just looks like um this could be a wee work. This could be a storage unit. It could be anything, right? So it's a little bit nondescript. It also allows them an opportunity to be a little bit more, um, to be, to kind of change as they go on branding wise. Because if you kind of have a very specific and concrete design language in the building, it kind of makes rebrands difficult. But in, in, initially it's, essentially all they need to do is change the signage on the outside and some of the boards and that's basically and maybe the screens and they basically updated it and a few of the vinyl pieces that's it but in terms of the actual structure it can kind of last it's kind of future proof that's basically what i mean it's basically future proof um again a signage on the outside and then the kind of screens indoors that make it all happen again i just wish the quality of the food was good man it's not that great personally that's just my humble opinion um let's play the video here of some of the signage Doubling down on what makes us great. Yeah, I love the logo. The logo is really cool. I'd wear that hat. I'd wear that snapback. Honestly, I'd wear that as a snapback for sure. Oh, it's a hoodie. It looks really cool. Oh, is that a plant-based burger? I saw that. I think so. Looking like a true king. We're proud of the cravings that make you blush and the food and the people I remember. Flame good burgers, so damn good. Awesome, so good taste. I wonder how much they paid for this new visual identity. I wonder who did it. Who actually did it? Say, Birkin was recently teased. Say, who did the actual identity of it? Who did it? Uh, yes, is it Ralph uh, Raphael of Restaurant Brands? Okay, Restaurant Brands International Head of Design. 
Maybe it's just in house. Is that in house? No way is that in house. That must be done by an agency. It looks cool regardless. Old signages everywhere. More signage. The kind of stuff that makes you drool. Oof, that looks pretty cool, isn't it? Redesigned. The, yeah, the uniforms look pretty cool. Don't get me wrong. The uniforms are pretty... Again, I know working there might not be the most enjoyable experience in the world, but the uniforms, don't, you can't deny it. That looks really cool, man. Like, that actually looks like a... The one thing I hated, I remember when I used to work in... Um, I was at a place called Hollywood Bar and I did like, you know, I was frying the, the nuggets and stuff and making the fries. So I did some of that sort of like fast food um, uh, service industry work before. And I hated it when I used to work there because usually I think even it's maybe a thing that's been phased out recently, but they always make you wear a polo. Polos are the kind of go to um, uniform that you have in these sort of jobs. I don't know why, because they maybe because they feel like it gives you... Um, a sort of professional look without being too button up. I don't know what it is, but they're not comfortable and they really count. They really counterproductive in terms of how you maneuver and move around in a store, especially when there's a fryer going on and there's heat everywhere and it's loud and it's damp and sweaty. It's not the best fabric to wear. You kind of want to be in a t-shirt or something, but they don't let you wear t-shirts. They usually always have like a either a polo or some sort of shirt, and they never they're never good. They always you know they catch smells really easily. You sweat really easy. It's just Oh, nice. So having this t-shirt looks pretty cool. Yeah, and it in dark colours too. So if you sweat in your armpits, people can't see too tough. This looks pretty awesome, and I like it. Again, the apron, the badges. I love it, man. I'm I'm not mad at it at all. I'm really not mad at it one one bit. Um, and then here we've got the little logo spinning around with the B. Looks pretty cool. And then that's it in it, right? Yeah. I like it, man. I like the logo. I like the redesign. I think it looks pretty cool. Interesting to see what they do in terms of collabs going forward. Will they enter the fray in terms of what McDonald's did? Or will they just stick to this redesign? Or maybe it's a well, Will it be an improvement on the actual product? That's the most important thing. Will the burgers actually be tasty? Who knows? Who knows? <sighs> Okay, let's move on here. Oh, why does it always do this and not let me? Oh God, well, sometimes I don't know why it does that, but hey, we're back now. Cool. Why, is it, why, do you, why do you think it does that? I don't know why it does that. Sometimes it'll do this, right? So if I do this, will it go back? So yeah, if I do will it go? No, I don't know why it does that. I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. What else we have to talk about here? Bum, bum, bum. Oof. Let's move this. Let's go here. Okay, I don't know why it does this, right? But all the time it will do this. Is it working now? It's still not working, is it? No, but I don't know why it's doing this. I really don't. I wish I knew. No source selected. Okay, I don't know why it's doing it. Sometimes it will cut, it will move around and not really allow me to do the scenes without flipping over to the flipping thing itself. It's just oh, so frustrating, this computer sometimes. I don't know. Maybe I have to get a switcher actually to make it work a little bit easier because I've got my little hockey set to kind of go back to the screen, but sometimes it doesn't let me go back on the screen easily. It's just goddamn annoying but hey we we progress we steamroll through we power on because that's what we're meant to be doing here isn't it that's what we're meant to be doing here so what's next on the list let's go back to here boom boom let's go here so next on the list we have news um man this whole trump um falling out has been pretty epic to watch from the outside in it it seems like all the social media platforms are waiting for this opportunity to basically get him the hell out of here and um i've got to be honest man i'm not too pleased again he's a deplorable character no one's co-signing um his uh rhetoric prior to the capitol building protest um and his general you know demeanor and attitude and you know how he basically approached the office um of the presidency wasn't the best way to do it you know going forward blah 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 we know he did do a really good job but 
in, apart from his sicker fans really no one really thinks he did a great job he might have done okay but not really great he really kind of wasted the opportunity to come in as a political novice and political outsider and really kind of shake things up essentially he just kind of carried on um as per usual you know patted his friends on the back did, did them pull some favors out of the book and essentially just used it as a platform to boost his own ego so um it was no surprise really when these social media platforms who have been consistently you know showing their uh, who've been quite clear in terms of the kind of voices that they don't want on their platforms for the most part right-leaning voices are usually um ostracized from most of these platforms it's not really the most comfortable spaces for them to kind of exist um especially not the same way that people do on the left so it was only it was only um it only made sense that the the kind of beacon image of um the right in terms of president trump being obviously um the president at the moment still were only less, less than 10 days left so no surprise that they decided to pull the plug on him completely but it's still kind of nuts to think that they all did they all kind of colluded behind the scenes to essentially get him the hell out of here and he essentially has no presence on social media at all at, at going forward um and again i i don't think that's right i don't think a sitting president should ever be kicked off of social media they should always have an opportunity or a platform to say their piece there should never be an up there should never be a they should never be in position where they can't do so and um i think this concerted effort to take him off of social media completely should be concerning for everybody because it means essentially you can't exist on these platforms if you don't if you think opposite of what the platform's ideology is um which goes against everything that you would imagine free speech is right um of course maybe he's obviously beyond the pale in terms of the riot that it caused in the capitol building but in terms of what this does going forward it doesn't set a good precedent in my opinion it really doesn't set a good precedent because there's always people that'll say oh it's a private company can do what they want set up your own social media platform they did it's a crappy one. They did that parlor thing that looks flipping terrible. It has some very questionable characters on there, but they did try and set up their own little, you know, um, alt-right Twitter thing, competitor. It was existing and doing whatever it was doing. And then they pulled the plug on that too. So what what is there to do? You stay on their platforms. You have to abide by their rules. You have to kind of abide by the, ide the ideology or be somewhat well-behaved you kind of get kicked off and do your own thing and they also kick you off their servers or kick you off their web no is it amazon web services right they kick you off of there so you can't have anywhere to host your your website um or, or your data or use their service right point blank so it, it's very um confusing like what do these 10 companies want do they want these uh figures to exist on their platform and say what they want to say or do they want them to go be free and make their own competitors what they're doing but then they pull the plug on that too it's a very very curious situation to be in and again i just don't think it's the right way to go forward especially when this guy is going to be out of office soon anyway there's loads of um court cases that are pending that are probably going to go thrown at him they're going to do whatever they can to impeach him they're going to do whatever they can to throw the book at him punish him in some way fine prison time whatever it may they're going to be doing they're going to do what they can so this just feels a little bit counterproductive i don't know maybe i'm i'm wrong there let me know what you think in the comments down below I don't know why it keeps doing that. Why can't I just have it normal? Why does it keep doing that? I don't know why. God damn you. Oh, well. Maybe I just did it wrong. Did I do it wrong? I don't know. I don't know. What did I do that was wrong here? Did I do something wrong? I don't know. Anyway, we move on. We move, we move, we move. Da, da, da. he's banned from there let's go on to something else here yeah this is one isn't it let's go in here let's do this one so i've been thinking right and i don't know if you guys agree but i've, I've been thinking whether or not i should buy a pair of uggs i've been thinking whether or not i should buy a pair of uggs and this comes off the back of seeing this amazing editorial with Ad andre leon tally um wearing a basically being the new pharaohs of uggs the new face of Uggs and he makes them look somewhat interesting 
again he's always sitting down um you know in this amazing pose that he has on there but i really 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 like how he's basically flexing them and it basically made me think hmm maybe i could make them work my idea is to have them paired up with like a really outdoorsy mountaineery jacket patagonia arteritz maybe like a north face or something along those kind of lines some nice um, washed out levi's rolled up and those big uh boots type of things um tucked in or, or overlapping on the outside sort of similar to this image here this is the sort of look i'm going for but of course selvage denim so you have the little selvage detail there on the side but this sort of look i think it's gonna work i really do oh, i've got to get rid of this shop tagger thing go away go away go away back we go so yeah what do you guys think am i bugging out um is it not a good idea they're quite expensive too though, right they're 165 they're a lot more oh my god these pop-ups loading up they're a lot more expensive than i imagined them to be i don't know why i think i thought they'd be a lot uh cheaper than what they actually are but they're rather expensive 165 is not cheap and um yeah i'd probably beat them up wear them like a they wear them like your local chav in the area that has the whole back leaning to one side uh bulging and all weird and disfigured but i quite like them and i think they look pretty cool what do you think edron lee and tally made me want a pair of uggs so this is a campaign here from harper's bazaar it says edron lee and tally is the man of many oh god almighty why does it keep doing that anyway edron lee and tally is a man of let's go where is it back here edron tally is the man of many um expository words but for his uh, latest project, the legendary fashion editor and first black creative director for the major fashion magazine, need only to pronounce one UG. Um, Tally, a larger than life character and walking encyclopedia fashion industry, has been tapped by the California based label known for its fleece line footwear to star in its latest campaign, which will also reportedly star model Imam. <laughs> Iman, sorry, um, titled Feel, the ongoing series started in November, September featuring the artist Sonia Sombrio, um, Fulton Leroy Washington was followed by the collection with a buzzy designer, Telfer Clemens, which they look really cool too, if you've seen the ones by Telfer, I look look amazing and um, now ug has um set its um site oh is it ug or uggs it's ug okay my bad it says so i can't even pronounce the name of the brand and i want them it says that's the fashion to shy but just don't call him that to his face he says an iconic person is someone who's achieved a great deal in their life tally express i don't consider myself an icon i consider myself uh, i consider president obama and the first lady michelle obama icons what they did for this country was amazing come out of harris will be an icon the first female vice president in every history in our country cool, cool cool that's all whatever but they look pretty cool on him man don't get me they look amazing here like fair enough he's tall he's got a presence he's just got some swag even when he's sitting down he's probably the only person i've seen that looks good sitting down most people have to do that weird make your legs look longer thing and you know crouching or standing next to a wall or looking like they're running somewhere but he looks really amazing sitting down on the chair looks amazing and i think what are those socks on the outside right yeah they are right massive woolly socks He's got the ones that are sort of cut off like sandals somewhat. Oh, they look so good. Though Tally may shun the, hor the honorific title, it's certainly deserved. A front row fixture for nearly five decades, he has championed the leading talents in the fashion industry, from designers to models to labels like UGG. He's even worn the brand signature boots for a number of glitzy events. He says, I'm the number one UGG fan. In fact, you've seen me so many times in the front row during fashion weeks in international global cities like Paris, London, Milan and, and Rome wearing a classic Ugg boot. Okay, I didn't know that. Tally has since left the fashion journalism starring his own radio show on Sirius XFM in 2017 and releasing a memoir, The Chiffon Trenches. Yeah, I've got to check that out actually. I haven't read the autobiography. It's meant to be really good. Um, lately, he's been quarantining at home in the White Plains, New York, which served as a backdrop for his campaign. Look at his home. His home looks amazing, doesn't it? In one image, Tally sports a tassam slipper under a crinkle Kaftan um, butterfly embroideries. Another shot is him wearing a new boot with a fedora and a red puffer coat by Norma Kamali. This reminds me a lot of um, uh, Majer did a few things like this, right? Like a sort of duvet blanket sort of jacket thing. Um, it looks incredible in this outfit, really, really well done. With a career um, like his, the halls of his daily home are filled with every conceivable style of leading to the names of footwear. But for Tally, when it comes to the ease of practicality, Ugg is the cut above. He says, I love the beautiful luxury shoes. I have wardrobes of Manolo Bennick's shoes made for just me. Wardrobes of John Lube shoes, which I could not afford today. And Baluti shoes, Tom Ford shoes, but a beautiful 
comfortable um as for your foot looks in those custom made shoes there's nothing as quite comfortable as an ugg slipper which i definitely agree with i think that's a very good thing to know in terms of collection of shoes and even it maybe extends to clothes i think you should always have you should probably always have stuff that occupies both ends of the spectrum so in one sense it's great to wear designer trainers i have got a pair of you know balenciaga triple s's but i also love wearing air force ones white and blacks right all white all blacks classic low classic mid and um i think those they both occupy you know one's like 90 pounds the other's like 600 but they both occupy they both occupy different um, ends of the price range, but they're all, they both can be very, they can both can be styled in a very great way, right? So that's what I think you should be um, putting in your collection. But again, yeah, I want a pair, man. I really do. I think they look pretty cool. Um, maybe I'm bugging out here. Maybe I'm kind of freaking out and I think I'm going to look like Adrian Telly and I probably won't look like Andre Leon Telly, but I want to give it a go. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Should I buy myself a pair of Uggs or should I leave it for the ladies? <laughs> Let me know. Ladies in the surf, because it's meant to be a good, why do surfers wear this? I remember that was a big thing you heard a lot. Oh, they wear them on the beach. Surfers, it's a big deal. Duh, 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 duh. Oh, I like them, man. They look pretty cool. And then I saw this article here from BuzzFeed talking about uggs um this trend here on tiktok supposedly of these kids cutting their boots so they can look like slippers for some reason which is odd considering that they sell a slipper so this is a headline from uggs says people are cutting up their ugg boot to make them into slippers and it's painful to watch so you've got this image of a person wearing an ugg and you've got this kid i'm guessing hopefully it's not some copyright music cutting a pair yeah let's take that off look at them oh you know it reminds me of a little bit i think someone else mentioned it that they there was this thing i think um uh is it steve caballero right that's what the, the half cabs are basically named off of he was basically the one that basically was cutting skate highs or whatever they may be into mids and that's when they started making mids right that was a big thing in um uh, skate culture you'd get a high top and you cut it into a mid to you know basically make them more comfortable but then you know later on they basically made you the actual shoes so you didn't need to cut them anymore so it's really odd that they're doing this um again maybe do you think it's do you think you should get some credit to virgil this is a virgil thing a remedy like because he was obviously doing the whole diy thing cutting on cutting sh i encourage people to cut the shoes draw on it maybe this is kind of an extension of it or maybe it's just a consequence of lockdown because kids are bored and they're at home nothing to do the Uggs are usually their slippers that they wear around the house, even though they're very expensive. So they're just kind of taking scissors to them and just, and because everyone else does it on social, they just do them themselves anyway. But it's really interesting, isn't it? Take the music off, got a little pair here, got a little flare. They're literally cutting them with scissors into slippers. God almighty, 160 quid boots, mate. These kids are insane. Niggas, they ain't fucking can just get over here get someone else cut them as well yikes that's a big deal man again i like the shoe man i don't know what what it is about them now my eyes have kind of changed in terms of what i see when i look at them i don't see the old frumpy karen shoe i see something i'd actually want to wear um what the, what people are saying in the comments are saying uh, okay of, overall people thought the idea was pretty big oh my god i threw my ripped ones away this is genius another person says love this great way to repurpose uh, i guess what because if if they're beat up i guess right you just kind of because i guess the the top bit usually gets a bit deformed but still man just buy the slipper however some still couldn't bring themselves to do it she said oh my god i don't care how old your uggs are i ain't doing that um is there a big market there is it must be nasty there's a big market for like secondhand birkenstocks right you see them a lot on facebook people selling birkenstocks and the, you know their whole foot's imprinted on it on the inside and they'll write something like hardly worn it's like hardly worn mate your whole i can see your dna on the flipping sandal i wonder if there's a secondhand market for uggs like that must be a funky shoe man like all deformed and with all your kind of toe crevices on the inside where you kind of like to chill out and hang out in the, your weird funky feet smell i'm sure there's some nasty nasty white girls that exist who kind of wear uggs barefooted as well in it so just imagine buying that off somebody yuck uh, for reference if you want to buy a brand new pair of slippers which is what adrian leon tally's got they're hundred dollars okay oh pretty decent isn't it 
again i don't know should i get them let me know in the comments down below should i get a pair of uggs um type yes type y for yes and n for no <laughs> should i get a pair let me know in the comments down below Ooh, tough in it tough 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 moving on what else do we have here bish bash bosh yeah, we have this very concerning article. This is from hmm, what do we have here? We have this art. We have an article here from Bloody Elbow. Um, headline reads: UFC on it. Brendan Schaub and Tito Ortiz among those who received COVID nineteen relief loans. Now, this wouldn't be an issue, you know. Out, you know, really, in any other time, it's you know because hey, it is what it is. These guys own businesses. Um, these COVID relief loans are meant to help them in order to make sure they don't fire people, make sure they're in business during the COVID nineteen lockdowns, um, allowing them to basically see themselves out the other side. But it's funny that the people that were applying for these loans um, are the very same people who've been, for the most part, except for Joe Rogan, who's kind of gone on a bit of an annoying, um, you know, um, downplaying of the virus. But most of them were the ones that were telling us that it wasn't a big deal, especially someone like a Brendan Shaw, who essentially, I think, this last year, um, especially off the back of, especially because uh, it preceded the whole Chris D'Elia, Brian Callen cancellations, that really affected his overall uh, popularity and appeal and it really turned people off some people obviously there's fans of this to exist out there he's got you know um, a lot of supporters that go to his show but I did think it contributed a lot to the overall dislike of the guy um, his kind of stance on COVID you know I understood at first because I thought you know these guys are stand-up comedians a big chunk of their um, earnings comes from doing live shows live shows are completely off the table when there's a risk when there's an airborne virus around that supposed to be spreads quicker inside closed uh, areas so i understood their annoyance that especially with the live in la considering what gavin newsom was doing he was he went out really hard locked down everything for a long long period of time and didn't allow any of these people to make any sort of income in any way shape or form and only now he's kind of recanting a little bit and sort of opening things up a bit because he's under some sort of pressure but i understood their annoyance about it but the downplaying of the virus um severity so the severity of the virus was super annoying especially once they got it, you know, inevitably karma struck and both Brendan Shaw and Brian Cannon ended up getting COVID. Uh, Brian got it pretty badly. And again, he's he's of the age where it could be a bit of an issue. Uh, Brendan, I think, still said recently in another podcast that he still hasn't got his taste back still. But even then, they doubled down. Brian kind of, you know, was quite... Um, uh, was quite honest about his mistakes in terms of how the virus affects people and sort of walk back his claims but brendan was really kind of doubling down on the fact that no it's not a big deal i got it so what he gave it to his entire family he gave it to chin loads of people got it in his team and they still continue doing shows right so it was a very odd thing to go about things so it's just it just kind of seems odd that the very same people that were downplaying the virus are the ones that were going out they're getting the relief loans and if you read in between the lines and you've kept attention with some of the podcasts especially with brendan not to tell on him but the, it seems like the loan wasn't necessarily used for what it was meant to be used for he spoke a lot about you know fitting a new roll cage in his car and a different exhaust and shit so it just it comes across a bit dodgy so this is an article here from bloody elbow it says on it brendan Shaw trt's among those who received covid19 relief loans said the following covid19 pandemic was weak has wrecked havoc on the world's economy a recent study from the university of california found that u.s real gross domestic product losses could range from low of 3.2 trillion to as high as 4.8 trillion over two years the study also found that job losses could range from 14 to 23 percent the united states got small business administration provided businesses with two types of relief loan during the covid 19 uh, via the cares act two types of relief loans were the edil and the ppp which is a paycheck protection program um the COVID-19 pandemic has touched the MMA world from top to down. Almost every MMA promotion has changed its business practices. Gyms are every size. Da, 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 da. Um, many businesses connected with MMA also have sought to govern. Oh, he, he didn't. Did he speak about um, Khabib's dad dying? Brenda, he didn't, did he? That was a big fun one as well. <laughs> um, so you got here, if you go scroll down, you've got here, they kind of pointed out where um, obviously you got Tenet Palace Jitsu, Eddie Bravo's thing. Um, you got On It, which is Joe Rogan's thing. Again, the, I'm not really 
I don't obviously Joe Rogan says it's his company, but I'm sure he's got a share in it, and it's a company that exists on its own. He shouldn't be taking money out of his own pay, out of his own pocket to pay. But it does come across weird when somebody's getting paid a hundred million from Spotify and they're still taking government assistance. But I guess it's just one of those things, you know, when you've got a limited business, is one of those kind of um, kickbacks that you're meant to kind of claim because you're paying taxes. I don't know, whatever it may be. And then if you scroll down here. I think you got the Brendan Shaw one, which is weird because he puts his Brendan Shaw MMA when he doesn't do anything really in MMA apart from the Below the Belt podcast show thing that he does. So this is Brendan Shaw MMA, 22 grand here on the 29th of, the 29th of April, $22,427 for payment protection for Brendan Shaw. So again, um, not the biggest deal, but in terms of kind of the downplaying of the virus, it just comes across odd. And then they reported a bit here as well on Yahoo Sports they mentioned it by name and said Brennan Shaw granted was not part of the crew that went out campaigning for Trump he did however use his platform to push the notion that COVID was overblown earlier on during the pandemic right up until he caught the virus which was really funny after doing a stand-up comedy gig where they were touching everybody and not social distancing like honestly like I, I don't know how many times the people in that studio have caught COVID it's pretty amazing and it's also interesting too the amount of people that were willing to go out and see Shaw do comedy during a pandemic like you know he's still got his training rules on he's not the best right he's still kind of getting comfortable and honing his craft if any if ever there was somebody you wouldn't want to see it's a comedian that's been in it for four years having taken what six months off because of a lockdown and seeing them do stand up again probably isn't the best person to see i'd imagine even bill burr is probably not great to see now because he's not you know got in the rhythm let alone somebody that's only got four years experience so it just seems a bit odd but again i just think podcast fans are just another level i think he's got a lot of fan base outside of actual traditional stand-up i think if if brennan just did a show just talking on a stage he'd still set it out probably because people just like him as a personality i guess so that is one of them but odd continue anyway continue to said turns out that during the period Shaw was telling his podcast since COVID-19 was no big deal Brendan Shaw and May fawned out it real enough to take out a £22,000 PPE loan on the 29th of April so again very odd very odd um no I guess in the grand scheme of things it's not a biggest deal but considering how they were downplaying the entire thing it does come across a bit bizarre that's what I have to say about that one Next on the list, we have uh, this article here from NikkiSwift.com. It says celebrity careers are destroyed during 2020. I think I mentioned this in a few shows prior. That it's interesting to me the amount of people that got cancelled during COVID. It felt like, in my opinion, from my perspective, it felt like because people were bored at home, it was probably the worst time to get cancelled or to be involved in some sort of public scandal because people were bored and at home on their phones. So it kind of heightened um, my new things that probably shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things and made them a lot bigger than what they are and it obviously negatively affected the people that were at the bare brunt of it for a longer period of time than it should have because no one has anything else to do they're bored drama that kind of you know essentially distracts them from the um, horrors of everyday life is very much welcome so there's a list of people here we're going to quickly go through and see what the deal is and again i'm only fascinated with this stuff as well because i don't know there's part of me that kind of hopes wishes one day that i have a um, crisis management company right that allows to kind of you know helps these public figures to navigate the murky waters of cancellation because i'm sure there's an art to it it definitely is i've seen the good i've seen the bad i've seen the ugly but definitely is a way to kind of get around and manage the cancellation in the best way possible and some of these people have done it well some people haven't so his first one is what stacy schroeder and kirsten doubt lost it all i'm guessing this is the one from vanderpump rules yeah, it is it said here stacy schroeder and kirsten were the queen bees of vanderpump rules up until june 2020 when patients reported that schroeder lost brand deals with R rachel and Billy after former castmate Faith Stowers recalled a 2018 incident where Schroeder and Kristen called the cops accusing her of a crime she didn't commit that was funny isn't it the two whitest of the whitest girls on the show decided to call the cops on a black girl one of the only ones that's been on Vanderpump Rules because something went missing classic 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 Karens um, on the Instagram live chat Stowers said that Schroeder misidentified her as an unnamed woman in Daily Mail um, Afri an African American lady who was robbing people Schroeder actually bragged about in the investigation on Stowers uh, showed her project Instagram but it wasn't enough as well none of as more of her past in incidents of racial insensitivity resurfaced including describing herself as a Nazi chic again 
I don't think even my agency can help you doing with that. In 2018, Instagram story, I'm complaining about black people wanting representation in film during a 2017 podcast. After writer revealed that Schroeder and Dirk got fired from Madame Rules, they both publicly apologized. However, Styles tell people that Schroeder never reached out privately. Doubt did DM her. Um, As Weekly said, Schroeder's podcast was removed from all platforms and her wine line with Doubt was pulled from stores. Doubt the same as he didn't have much to lose as Schroeder, but her publisher did not promote her book but after just one week of sales according to deadline show then Dota began working with a crisis management team in the wake of the scandal so again maybe it was too late by that time to to kind of plug the hole but i guess there's no coming back from them in that regard i guess when it comes to racial things it just seems like there's nothing really you can do if you don't get ahead of it before it becomes a big story it just you have to do that kind of self-flagellation thing where you come out and maybe do um what is, you remember Kalila on Tiger Belly when she started sobbing about Black Lives Matter when the protests were happening? Like, I don't know what I did. Like, she just started making it all about her. You just have to do something like that. Um, you can't just come out. You can't come out and then you can't come out and acknowledge it and then not apologize properly. You have, sort of have to just, you know, cry profusely and hope that kind of makes it go away. Ellen DeGeneres, of course, you know about her. Um, I don't know who this is. Lee Michelle. You got Nene Leakes. So don't care about this one. Tory Lanez is an interesting one because of the whole Megan Thee Stallion shooting. Um, he's fine because it's a court case now, so they're going to basically go to court sometime this year, I'm assuming. They're going to find out the actual details of what happened that fateful night after they went to Kylie's, right? It all started off pretty well, wasn't it? That amazing image of him in between Kylie uh, Jenner and Megan Thee Stallion, every boy out there sort of looking at him thinking, wow, man, how did he do this? Him in his head thinking, yeah, look at what I'm doing. And then suddenly a few hours later, all hell breaks loose. And still, we don't have the truth of the issue, but considering how Tory is moving, and navigating out there in the streets it seems like he's very confident that he did nothing wrong so let's see how that transpires so he's fine you got kelly dude i'm not sure who that is uh obviously the johnny depp and amber heard thing was a big deal and essentially told us that men getting beaten up by women nobody gives a shit um colton underwood i don't know who that is and then Crystalia, interesting one, right? Crystalia here says so Crystalia found fame as a comedian and an actor in TV shows, including Whitney and You. The success came crashing down in June 2020 when five women spoke to the Los Angeles Times, accusing Delia of exposing himself and other sexual improprieties. Two of those women claimed they were under 18 when they had a counsel with Delia, one of whom allegedly began corresponding with him when she was 17 and he was 36 in September 2020. CNN shared accusations of two additional women who had similar experiences, including traumatic, unwanted advances, in which Delia exposed himself. <laughs> I forgot about that one. I think that was the one where the lady said he pulled out his piece in the car, in it. <sighs> the year's lawyers, Andrew Brett, uh, Brettel, shared a statement with Variety declaring the lawyer denies the allegations and emphatically states that he has never engaged in any sexual encounter with a woman without consent. Even so, his career will probably never be the same. Deadline reported that he was dropped by his talent agency and management company. Netflix stitched plans to for an unscripted prank show that he was prank used to partake in he also was replacing the upcoming movie army of the dead with flipping tig Notaro. that must have been more uh debilitating and more of a punch to the gut than brendan Shaw fake crying on the fire and the kid right the fact that tig Notaro replaced him is like yikes um the delirious the, the uh bigger worries they're missing opportunity to prank come randoms on netflix show but the lost jobs and lack of industry support will identify have been a lasting impact on his career good lawyers don't come cheap and I think I said it before at the end of the other live stream. The issue with Crystal Leah more so is the fact that of his image prior, no one, I guess no one, most people didn't see him in a sexual way. I guess he had an appeal with some girls. I know a lot of girls liked him and thought he was really handsome. You know, he's a stand-up comedian. He's probably the only one that looks the way he does. Most stand-up comedians look like Tim Dillon. No offense. So if that's the case, or like Tim Dillon or like, what's the other guy? Um jim norton and all those kind of dudes so you know there was obviously uh, he did have some sort of pull with the ladies but no one thought of him as a creep right because you didn't really see that in his material you maybe saw him as a bit of a funny dude um life at the party sort of guy but you never really saw the creep side of things of him of chasing you know tail chasing the girls around town so when that story came out it sort of caught everyone by surprise because you didn't view him that way. And also the fact that it involved really, really young girls was like, whoa, do you know what I mean? That was the thing that kind of put him off. So that's what fucked him over. Like you think of something like a Louis C.K. When that story came out about Louis C.K., it wasn't that surprising because his material is really dark, right? And he kind of lets you know in his stand-up that he's into some 
weird shit. So when that story came out, you're like, oh, that makes sense. It's Louis C.K. Don't get me wrong, still, you know, horrible thing for the people, the comedians that are involved to go through. But in terms of an actual event, you can kind of imagine that happening, right? You can kind of picture it even before it's been told. But Chris Lee is sort of free for a loop. And then, of course, himself as well, he probably is dealing with a lot of struggle in terms of, I guess, not feeling, I guess it's more so shame in it, right? The fact that everyone knows your secret, because I think that's a big part of it. Even though, let's say outside of rape, let's say you're, you're kind of into some really odd things, it must be really shameful to have that exposed to the world because it's something that you keep private between yourself and whoever you're trying to pursue. And sometimes you you swing and you miss, right? And it is what it is. Or sometimes you get a bit overbearing or you get a bit excited. Cool, it happens. But for it to be displayed around the entire world and then on top of that, for you to be accused of you know sexual assault and coming onto people unwantedly, it can be hard thing for you to kind of figure out in your own head so um, I guess there's no legal proceedings that he can basically face apart from I guess suing for damages and emotional distress I'm not too sure if there's any sort of um uh thing that he can be pulled up in the courts of in that so it's more so just him having to get the courage to step back out in front again because I think you know he's still got a pretty loyal fan base I'm sure the podcast listeners will want to hear his story his first show that he gets back will be you know will do some good ratings people want to hear what he thinks about the lack of support he got from his actual friends in the industry which would be curious to see what he thought about Chris Alia and Brian Callan crying and only for Brian Callan to be accused of rape the very next week what he thinks about Bert Kreischer another good friend of his who basically said he never spoke to him um, even though they did a show together and he had to scrap the show and film it with other people and just in general the fact that people kind of distance themselves from him as soon as he kind of got accused of what he got accused of but they were also very quick to get him on his show and enjoy all the riches of his views when he was around i wonder what he'd say about something like that but again i just think someone like him he has to kind of deal with a lot of things he's had to get ahead of things but of all the people on this list of the ones i know he might be the only one that could have a chance of having some level of a, of having some kind of career going forward because again he's kind of a comedian he doesn't try and paint himself as a perfect civilian so there is an aspect where you can kind of say hey i have my flaws i have my things i'm going through bloody blah blah blah, blah. Uh, obviously tory lanes has a, has a chance too because it's a court issue so he can basically prove his innocence there in a court of law but it's hard man isn't it 2020 was the year of getting cancelled it's very very difficult i guess it's the one of the worst times to ever get oh yeah there's all um destroyed their career it's it's one of the worst times to get cancelled because again like i said everyone's at home nothing to do staring at their phone um it's hard to kind of bounce back from it but i guess in this new year with things maybe opening up with the vaccine it could be a good way to just slip out people kind of forget because they're too busy partying and getting high and fucking everything that moves to kind of worry about you so that might be good timing maybe wait until the summer when everything reopens and then slip back out again who knows interested to see what goes on let me know in the comments do you think chris Lear can make a comeback let me know what you think in the comments down below okay <clears throat> What else do we have here? What else do we have here? Mm -hmm. Let's go for this one. What's got? Yeah, let's go for this one. Let's do this. So, um, this is an odd one, isn't it? So, this is a courtesy of Deaf Noodles and um this lady i was thinking is she the devil is selena powell the devil that's the question i have to see today because definitely just posted that this really really troubling series of screenshots from selena powell's tiktok it looks like where she essentially exposes the celebrities that she slept with that asked her for an abortion um and again man like she <laughs> I wonder what she does this for. Like, what is this about? Like, what is the end goal with something like this? Like, what is she getting out of this situation? I don't really know. Um, to say it's, news is totally unexpected. Selena Power claims Bryce Hall, Jason Derulo, Offset, Eminem, and Gucci Mane made her get an abortion. She later shared a document alleging that sent, allegedly sent by Offset's legal team, showing that she allegedly paid her fifty thousand dollars to get one. God Almighty, man! Like this woman is a devil, isn't it? She's a devil she's ruined i don't know how many relationships behind the scenes she must have ruined exposed so many truth that probably no one she's she's the master similar to trisha pay she's the master of sharing information that you had giving you information that you didn't want any any part of it's really really concerning um again what brought us about probably bored at home you know trying to make some extra bucks 
um, get a bit of attention, hopefully parlay that over to her Instagram. But God almighty, this is odd, isn't it? Very, very bizarre behavior. Um, and then another series of tweets here, she also claimed that Offset, Eminem and Gucci Mane got involved. And again, a lot of the dudes have themselves to blame, right? I don't know what it is about guys in hip hop who kind of all want to be with the same woman. Maybe because she's, you know, very available, it looks like. She kind of makes herself available, slides in people's DMs, whatever it may be. But Jesus Christ, she got a screenshot here of the actual letter itself that she sent to somebody. God almighty. Oh, and I guess she's alleging the offset thing because I think that happened last year, right? Or a year before that. She allegedly, she alleged that offset got made her get an abortion. Then she kind of uh, threw it back through pressure. But now she's saying it actually did happen. It's just, I don't know, man. What is wrong with this young lady? Let me know. I don't know. But she is the devil, isn't it? She definitely is the devil. There's nothing good can come out of this. Just pure and utter chaos um, that she's basically unleashing to the world. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know what this is about, man. Um, I have no, I have nothing to say really on this one. I really don't have nothing to say. I don't know why I brought this up. It's so, so very concerning. Um, but yeah, I guess big up her in it. If this is the way she kind of makes money and makes sure bills are paid, I get in. She has to do what she has to do, I guess, in it. But God damn, these guys need to just get make. This is is that cautionary tale. If it keeps happening and no one listens or no one, uh, you know learns the lessons that she's basically got yeah this is the issue with people like this right fair enough they're ready and available but they also seem like they will always hold it over your head and whenever they're bored or whenever you do them dirty they'll just go out there and you know and expose it for the sake of a couple of retweets like how much attention did this really get right like who really cares about this story going forward it's like i don't know man I don't know, I question, I question reality sometimes, I really do question reality, obviously we've got this bit of, bit of the fiend thing trending, you know what the deal is with that one, isn't it guys, <laughs> but yeah, so, so bizarre, so, so bizarre, uh, moving on, what else do we have here, I think that might be it, you know. Yeah, let's end it then. I'll, come, I'll bring the other stuff in another time. But that's it, man. That's the Action Zing Show episode number 421. Was it 421? Is it 421? It's 421, isn't it? Yeah, it's 421. It's 421. It should be. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Action Show episode number 421. If it's your first time tuning in via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you listen via the podcast app, please give me a five star review. Don't just share with your friends. And of course, support via Patreon is always more than welcome at patreon.com for Agostino. That's patreon.com for just A G O S T I N H O. Get involved, get in there, get in there today. See you soon, guys. Take care. Peace.